We now move on to Rule Amendment 4, Rule D, Functions and Authority Submitted by the National Dib Disabled Members Committee. President, Conference, Angela Hamilton, moving Rule Amendment 4 on behalf of all disabled members. Eight years ago, I chose to join Unison, and I chose to join Unison because they were the most committed union to equality and fair representation. The only union whose rule book not only allowed self-organisation, but actively encouraged it. So imagine my surprise a year later when, as a disabled activist, I discovered disabled members don't have representation on our highest decision-making body. How can this be, I asked. I got answers like, we've been asking for years, but there are more important things. There are lots of members of the NEC who are disabled, and the best one, we already know disabled people suffer from discrimination, so we know what we need to do. Well, no conference, that isn't good enough. I'm sorry. If you're disabled, there is nothing more important than making sure your voice is heard. There are disabled people on the NEC, and they do a fantastic job of representing their service groups and their regions, but they're not there to represent disabled members. And why should anybody be asked to do two jobs at the same time? I'm sorry, but unless you're disabled, you have no idea the type of prejudice, discrimination, and harassment and pity that disabled people face every day. Employers who not only refuse to make reasonable adjustments, but treat us like we're um, awkward just for having the, the nerve to ask for them. The shop worker who throws you out because your medication makes your words slur. This happened to me not long after I was diagnosed with MS. I did try to explain, as did my late mother, but they just threatened to call the police. It was one of the most upsetting and humiliating things that has ever happened to me. This year, I'm trying to raise £5,000 for charity. I've swam in the North Sea on Boxing Day. I'm going to zip wire off the Tyne Bridge, walk on fire and go swimming with sharks. I'm even going to go blonde for a day in front of thousands of people. <laughs> so 20... <laughs> 20 years after being thrown out of that shop, there's very little I'm scared of, except for going back into that shop, because the same thing might happen again, or someone might remember, and the pointing, and the staring, and the whispering might start. And then there's the government ministers who call us scroungers, demonise us at every opportunity. Frankly, I think they'd rather that we sat in a corner silently, or better still, went away and waited to die. Conference, if you're disabled, prejudice, discrimination, pity and ignorance is an everyday occurrence in every part of your life. Earlier this week, as I left the Disabled Members Caucus, a delegate who was walking near me asked which region I was from. I said, I'm from Northern Region, but I'm here from Disabled Members. Their response was, oh, are you here to look after them? I wasn't only shocked, I felt like I'd been punched in the stomach. I calmly replied, no, I'm disabled, a disabled rep. The response was, you don't look disabled. And I replied, well, that's half the problem, isn't it? And I walked away. So if that delegate is still here, I'd like to apologise to you if I appeared a little sharp. But in my defence, I was stunned that some of the, our union members still had little, such little understanding of disability. The Equality and Human Rights Commission <laughs> have told us that at the current rate of change, this discrimination against disabled people is never, ever going to end. That's right, disabled people will never achieve equality in our society. So surely now is the time to make sure we are equal in our union. Your disabled members have been asking for this rule change for at least 10 years. It's not about tokenism. It's about having someone who understands the issues, who is there to speak on our behalf. Last year on the NEC's advice, we brought this issue to conference as a motion that included a consultation. We, asked, we did what you asked and the results were overwhelmingly positive. And I'd like to thank the NEC who have been told are withdrawn their opposition to this rule change. So today I'm standing here, not for me, but for all our disabled members. And I'm asking you not just to listen, but to hear us. I'm not asking you to support me, I'm asking you to support the disabled members in your branches. We need a th two thirds majority here today and only you can deliver that for us. Don't continue this policy of exclusion and segregation. Don't let your disabled members down. Follow the lead of the 96% of branches who supported us in the consultation. And if you're still not sure why you should change, support this rule change, think about it this way. No one chooses to be disabled. Most people aren't born disabled. Most people become disabled at some time during their working lives. So conference, if for no other reason, 
Please, please support this rule change, because you never know, one of these days, you could be a disabled member yourself. Conference, I move. Just before I move to the next speaker, I just want to clarify the NEC's position, which is to leave it to conference. Okay. Um, speaker against. Michelle England, North West Region, uh, opposing Real Amendment 4, and it's with some reluctance that I do that because um, I know what a brilliant job the self-organised groups uh, do in challenging discrimination and uh, exclusion. Yet the amendment seems to create additional seats for disabled members. And I'm not sure what evidence there are that they're underrepresented within that body. When the four black members' seats were created on the NEC, it was uh, fixing serious underrepresentation of black members. Likewise, when the NEC young members seat was created, um, there wasn't a single young member's seat on the NEC. So, where are the justifications for the seats? What about LGBT needs? Is there adequate representation for all self-organised groups? And if there's a need to review that for the uh, representation and proportionality on the NEC, then should we do that with a report, with recommendations, and uh, not in an adult way? Please oppose. Thank you. Thank you, Delegate Speaker, for... Thank you, Chair. Ash Doby, National Black Members Committee. Ash Doby, National Black Members Committee. Sorry, Chair, I forgot to uh, identify myself on Tuesday, so I thought I'd do it twice now. <laughs> Conference, Unison is a democratic member-led union, and we are rightly proud of our commitment to self-organisation. Conference many years ago, the National Black Members Committee requested for reserve seats on the NEC. We needed to have black members on the, NE, on the NEC who would represent us, people who would make sure that our views were heard. Our disabled members supported us at that time. They knew we were suffering from discrimination and prejudice and wanted to help us to fight this in any way they could. We were lucky with the support of the NEC and our disabled members, we got the seats we needed. And now it's disabled members' turn to ask us for the, our, our help. We all know that the Tory government see disabled people as an easy target. We've all seen that, that our disabled colleagues to be at the front of the redundancy queues when public sector cuts are implemented. We, we all know the kind of discrimination and abuse disabled people face. So when our disabled members told us they needed to be represented on the NEC, we listened. And when they told us they needed someone on the NEC who was there specifically to speak on their behalf, we heard them. And now, when disabled members can and ask black members for our help, we didn't hesitate in saying yes because anyone who has had to fight against prejudice and discrimination knows you can fight that battle. You can't fight that battle on your own. You need your friends, your colleagues, and your comrades there to support you. So conference, on behalf of the black members who know what it's like to be heard, I'm asking you to listen to our disabled members, understand that they need to know what's best what's best they need and please support the rule change thanks ash next speaker conference president chair peter daly housing associations branch speaking in support of rule d functions and authority reserve seat disabled member seats on the nec conference my story i joined the army at 15. I did all the young things that a young man would do in the army. I got sent away. I went to Berlin. I guarded Rudolf Hess in Spandau prison as the only prisoner. I came back. I went back to Hansworth in Birmingham. I fought skinheads. 
the National Front, football supporters who came and terrorised our communities. Why? Because it was right to do so. I came into membership of NALGO in 1978. I became disabled whilst in membership. Whilst I was representing, my representing members, my body was fighting me. Fortunately, my cancer is now in remission. <laughs> Throughout my membership of both NALGO and Unison, I've been accepted as an activist and latterly so as a disabled activist. I welcome the NEC's change of position. Why? Because it's right. Unison has a proud history and now, hopefully today, after today, we'll welcome two members onto the NEC as disabled members. We, disabled members, have made a valuable contribution to this union conference. Vote positively. Give us the two-thirds. Thank you. Thank you, Delegate. Platform Speaker. President uh, Conference, Moyen Lemayonel speaking on behalf of the NEC. Conference, many of you know me as a great supporter I've given to self-organisation within our union. It's where activism begins and it's where I begun. The NEC has listened to various representations around this rule change, uh, around this rule change and, has, and as a listening NEC, we have changed our position of opposed to leave it to you conference to decide. But I will give you some information in order to assist you in making an informed decision. I will start by saying our original position was not about the NEC opposing self-organisation. As was being rumoured, we remain e committed to equalities and self-organisation in our union. Conference, there are reserved seats for black members and low-paid women and young members on the NEC, all of whom were substantially underrepresented. The NEC is proud that Unison has been at the forefront in pushing the adoption of the social model of disability and leading the fight for comprehensive rights for disabled people. We are extremely proud that we have the structures and mechanisms in place to ensure that disabled members are heard in unison through branches, regions, National Disabled Members Committee and Disabled Members Conference and through the three NEC members on the National Disabled Members Committee. Following the motion debated at last year's conference, the Disabled Members Committee devised and issued consultation on the provision of two seats to the NEC. This consultation was undertaken by regions and, and uh, branches were consulted. Results of the co consultation was extremely disappointing and difficult to draw a conclusion from due to the significantly low response rate. Three regions, one of them only by one vote, voted four. Three regions were against. Two regions said they could not form a democratic view due to the lack of branch responses, and four regions did not respond at all. The regional SOGs are in the majority in support, and at national level, two SOGs are four, and two have no position. Conference, it's important to note that nearly 30% of the NEC members are op openly identified as disabled and participate in the decision-making process. As mentioned earlier, three NEC members are nominated to the National Disabled Members Committee. They represent and fully participate. The, the union also has the National Equality Liaison Committee, where self-organised groups and national officers meet with the presidential team, all the NEC chairs, and ha who give both written and verbal reports. Conference, unison, disabled members are not an afterthought. They are not let down by their union, and disabled Sorry, members Maureen. are listened to. Conference, I'll leave it to you to decide. Thank you, um, Maureen. I have a point of order. Hi, Max Hindle, Stockport Local Government Branch, asking that the question be put. 
Okay, thank you. That is a competent point of order. I do have um, eight um, further speakers, but as always, the decision is yours. Um, I will now put to you, um, um, can I see all those in favour of the question being put? Okay, thank you. And all those against? The question will be put. Okay. Um, right of reply, Angela. Um, I'd like to just respond to some of the issues raised there. Um, it would be two extra seats on the, the NEC. The LGBT committee do have the right to ask for those seats. They haven't, and we wouldn't deem to sp speak on their behalf and say they wanted them. Um, the consultation wasn't sent out by the National Disabled Members Committee, it was sent out by the DNO Committee of the NEC. Four regions voted in favour, three against, the rest didn't reply, so that was incorrect. Um, there is nobody on the NEC to represent disabled members. There are disabled members on the NEC. There are disabled members who support your regions possibly, or your service groups. But what happens if your region or your service group has a different opinion to the disabled members? Who speaks up for disabled members then? There is an Equality Liaison Committee. I attend that Equality Liaison Committee. It's not a decision-making committee. We receive a lot of reports and we ask questions on them and we feed back. But it's not a decision-making committee. It's just a committee where we can talk and we can put our point of view across, but we'd never hear whether it's been taken notice of or not. We never get through to the NEC. We don't speak to all of them. We never get the chance to speak to all of them. If disabled members' voices were being heard, they wouldn't have asked for this. It went to Disabled Members Conference in October 2014. It was voted for unanimously. Not a single disabled member voted against it. Disabled members then choose by an elected ballot which members, which motions go to conference. This received over 90% of the votes. Disabled members do not feel they are being represented on the NEC. I don't know which way you're going to vote today. All I can ask you to do is to listen, please, to me, to all of those other people. You're not voting for me. You're not voting to support me. You're voting to support disabled members. This isn't about me, and it isn't about half of the people in this room. It's about your disabled members. So, so please, please, we need a two-thirds majority. Please do support us. Put your hands up. Thank you. Thank you, Angela. Um, we we do, will move to the vote. Um, we do need um, a two-thirds majority for this um, amendment to be carried. Um, the National Executive Council policy is to leave to conference. Um, can I see all those in favour of rule amendment for the functions and authority? Okay, thank you. And those against? That's very clearly carried. Yeah. Thank you.